Hey there and welcome to Text Connect. I am Abhimanyu and you are listening to Textile Quest, an exclusive podcast series for the fashion and textile industry. So this is the fourth episode of this podcast series and the first of this September month in which we'll cover all the updates, news and the innovations which have taken place in the first 15 days of the September month. So let's start with uh, discussing the global scenario of how the economic conditions are currently. The update is that the inflation in US and Europe is still persistent and this has caused the Indian textile industry a bit of unrest because a lot of them depend on their exports to the countries in Europe and the US. So let us have a look at the first article which says the cotton prices have finally started sliding. Now there is some relief on the cotton price front with the early arrival of the new cotton and the price pressure the domestic market cotton price has reduced from the level of 1 lakh to 90000 per candy one candy contains 355 kg of cotton so the reduction has been around 10% now the mcx cotton price per bale that is the commod in the commodities market which was prevailing at around 50000 rupees per bale has come down to a 36480 rupees price which is a reduction of 27% now the a thing to note here is that a bale has 170 kg of cotton however compared to the cotton price prevalent across the globe especially in countries like pakistan and china the indian cotton prices are still higher by 15% to 20% now the cotton requirement by the indian textile industry would surpass the production the duty free export of cotton might encourage 12 to 15% of good quality raw cotton export from the country during the season resulting in cotton shortage during the off season textile industry is also hopeful that the 8% increase in cotton area and the numerous steps taken to prevent the infestation of pink boll worm white fly and curly leaf cotton diseases the cotton production for the coming season might be comfortable enough to help the industry bounce back in a short span of time now ravi sam the chairman of south india mills association sima said that the domestic price must match the prices prevailing in the competitive countries and internationally to have a level playing field and enable the indian cotton textile industry to revive from the unforeseen crisis He has appreciated the proactive and bold steps taken by the Union Minister of Textiles to control the speculation of the cotton trading by directing SEBI and MCX to bring necessary changes. He also added that the anticipated cotton price even during the peak cotton season would be much higher than the minimum support price. Therefore, the duty removal will not affect the farmers. Now, following the cotton trail, we'll move on to the next article which also says that cotton prices have crashed at 24% in China after the US ban in the year June 2022 the chinese cotton prices are adopting the opposite trend from the global market cotton prices are hovering at a high level in most countries but the prices are falling in china an analysis said that china cotton index cci declined around 31.10% since february 2022 when the prices peaked Now the prices crashed have been at around 24.13% after after the US ban in June this year. The trend reversed in the coming months as an effective date of US ban on the cotton and the cotton products originating from the Xinjiang region of China was nearing. Cotton slipped around 7% in the next 4 months till June when the ban came into effect. So this is the timeline of how the cotton prices kept falling and how all the events that affected the cotton price after the the US ban the prices registered a steep decline of 17.88% in the month of july now according to the media reports from china the local government and the industry are taking the US ban as an hostile step in the international trade activities chinese government and the business community are trying to consume locally banned cotton and export to other countries but the market sentiments are dampened due to the oversupply Moving on to the next fiber that is the polyester yarn market the article says India's polyester yarn market revenue to grow at around 20% this fiscal year now there has been a healthy demand from the end user industries they have increased the blending with cotton yarn due to the decadal high prices of cotton 
Now this will drive the revenue growth of 18 to 20 percent this fiscal year for polyester yarn manufacturing sector. Better profitability and expected modest capital spending will improve the credit profiles of these polyester yarn manufacturers. Now the polyester yarn is used mostly in athletic and the leisure wear, home textiles and the garments. The recovery in the demand from these end user segments and multiple price hikes had led to a revenue growth of 60% in the last fiscal year, even though on a low base with sales volume picking up only 15%. Demand is seen keen to remain healthy this fiscal too, with garments and home textile segments expected to grow at a 16-18% to rate and 12-13% to in the fiscal year 2023 respectively. Now this continued wide price differential between cotton yarn and the polyester yarn will result in a higher blending among downstream players. Now this will further spur the demand of polyester yarn. The PTA that is purified terephthalic acid and monoethylene glycol MEG, both the crude derivatives which are used in making the polyester yarn account for 80% of the raw material cost for polyester yarn manufacturers. These prices have increased sharply due to the supply chain issues arising from the Russia and Ukraine conflict. However, there is a demand and timely pass through have supported the polyester yarn spreads. The polyester yarn sector will also benefit from favorable demand supply dynamics as no large capacity addition is expected in the industry over the next two fiscal years, while demand is expected to grow at 7-8% to for the same period. But our next article highlights a humongous capacity expansion in the polyester yarn manufacturing that is by the Indian conglomerate Reliance Industries. RIL will invest in capacity expansion in the polyester value chain over the next five years. The chairman Mukesh Ammani said this while addressing the 45th annual general meeting of the company. The company will also build one of the world's largest carbon fiber plants. We will also reinvest in the polyester filament yarn and the polyester staple fiber yarn. This was said by Ammani at the AGM. Consistent with the company's vision for new materials, RIL will also build in phases India's first and one of the world's first and also the largest carbon fiber plants at Hazira with a capacity of 20,000 MTPA. Now let's move on and have a look of how India's competitors have been performing in the textile garment markets. Vietnam's textile garment exports have reached to a $45 billion in 2022. Vietnam's textile and garment industries anticipated to make a $45 billion in exports after earning around $40.4 billion in 2021. The country's textile and garment products account for a global market share of 5.2%, making Vietnam the world's third largest textile exporter. Its biggest importers are the US, South Korea, Japan and the Europe. The textile industry has been expanding fast over the last five years at 20-26% to annually. Now to sustain this growth trend, the state should quickly disperse the financial aid for the enterprises and reform the mindset in attracting investments to the textile and the garment material production in Vietnam. The next article says that China still remains a difficult market for the foreign brands. China is one of the largest apparel consumer markets in the world. But the global fashion brands are finding it difficult in this market right now, despite their decades of experience across the globe. There is a surge in nationalism, especially amongst the young consumers, and that is the latest obstacle for the global fashion brands trying to make a mark in the Chinese market. Moreover, the Chinese consumers have become more price conscious and fashion conscious, and the Western brands fail on both these fronts. Clothing and accessories retailer Gap has been reducing its number of stores in mainland China since opening its 200th in Xi'an in 2019. As of this month, the figure has fallen to 143, according to its official website. According to the first quarter earnings, Gap Group sales fell by 13% a year to 3.5 billion US dollars, taking net losses to 162 million dollars. H&M, which drew criticism for being the first company in China to publicly boycott Xinjiang Cotton, reported a nearly 40% year-on-year decline in the sales in China, and its fourth quarter. 2021 fiscal results. The British clothing brands Topshop and New Look had earlier suspended their operations in China in 2018 due to weak performances. Even Zara has closed their online stores as end of the July month. 
The next article is a reflectance of the global inflation. That is Walmart cancels multiple orders. Walmart has reportedly cancelled billions in orders due to overstocks as the retailer attempts to clear out inventory excess. In a call with investors announcing results for the second quarter, Walmart CFO John Rainey said that the company has cancelled billions in orders to deal with excess inventory that has amassed over the flu last quarters. Walmart has found itself with the higher than usual stock levels, which the company says is a result of delayed orders from quarter 1 and quarter 2 that it has only recently taken the delivery of. Together with the current existing orders, this means with the Walmart's warehouses and stockrooms are now overflowing. A shift by consumer spending away from the discretionary categories is also compounding the issue, leaving Walmart with the excesses in certain categories. Though the Walmart US CEO and the president John Furner was confident as he said we feel much better about the second half of the year. We still have the inventory to work through and ingest from the backlogs so we need a couple of quarters to do that. Moving on to the next article which says that the global Japanese apparel retailer Uniqlo has accelerated its expansion in India. This is by announcing its plans to open a new store in Chandigarh this fall. Tomohiko Sei, the chief executive officer of Uniqlo India said that we remain committed to being an integral part of India's retail growth and to make life wear accessible to all. This fall season, we are thrilled to be entering a new market in Chandigarh. Now this newest store is to open on 29th of September, which will also serve as a hub and have access to markets of Punjab, Haryana, Himachal Pradesh and Jammu and Kashmir. The upcoming store will be spread over two floors with total sales area of approximately 15,000 square feet. The new store will also offer the entire range of foreign winter products for men, women, kids and babies such as its innovative and functional ultra light down ULD, heat tech garments, recycled fleece and planner as well as products featuring premium fabrics such as cashmere, lambswool and merino. The world's third largest fashion brand entered India back in 2019. It has recently opened its doors to customers in Lucknow in July and is currently operating six stores in Delhi NCR and one in Lucknow. Now there is a bit of good news for India as the FTA that is the free trade agreement with UK is to be ready before Diwali. This was quoted by the Commerce Secretary. Negotiations between India and the UK for the proposed free trade agreement are at the last stage and it now is distinct than the, that the deadline of the Diwali in October would not be missed. In April, both the countries had set the Diwali deadline for the conclusion of an India-UK FTA. BVR Subramaniam, the Commerce Secretary, said that the both countries are on track to meet the deadline and 19 out of 26 chapters are closed. He added that there are a couple of areas where we are negotiating and the Diwali deadline is not going to be missed. UK is an important market for the Indian apparel exporters and compared to its competitors, Indian apparel exporters have a duty disadvantage of 9.6% in the UK. Prior to the pandemic in 2019, the total import of apparel in the UK was around $24.9 billion. Out of these imports, from Bangladesh were around $3.6 billion, while it was just $1.4 billion US dollars for India. So let's wait for the final confirmation of the FTA, which will eventually be a boost for the Indian exporters of garments and textiles. Now coming to the Mitra parks, the government has asked the states to provide a long-term projection for power tariffs. Ahead of approving proposals for mega integrated textile region and apparels, that is a PM Mitra, the central government has asked the states to provide a long-term projection for the power tariffs that would be charged at these parks. As per the reports, about 13 states had sent 11 proposals for the textile parks, while Madhya Pradesh had sent 4 proposals. Maharashtra and Karnataka have sent to each. The government will most likely select only one proposal from each state. Punjab, however, did not fulfill the criteria of providing 1000 acres of, of land. Two months back, the Union Minister of Textiles and Commerce Industry, Piyush Goel had said that the states will ensure support, such as affordable power, land and effective labor laws will get the preference in the selection for the proposed Mitra Park scheme. The scheme announced uh, in the budget 2021 
and given a budget of rupees 4445 crores for 7 years up to 2027 2028 seven such parks are due to be approved as per the government officials the states where mega textile parks will be set up have almost been finalized but the government is trying to get a few things from the state by way of concession we are trying to get states to agree to better power regime in some states the cost of power is quite high and we are trying to get it reduced this was said by the government they have been asked to give a long term road map such as of 15 years and the power tariff that will be charged at these textile parks the government has been telling them to refrain from raising power charges for 15 years but the government is looking for some kind of a projection regarding the same so this is it this was a more of a textile wrap for the first 15 days of september don't worry i'll be back on the 30th of september again with the wrap of the fashion and the textile industry along with some innovations that i'll come across in the coming month until then keep listening to textile quest subscribe to our channel on youtube text connect and do follow us on spotify for a seamless audio experience of our podcast